Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin as always with the latest headlines. We are all set for another day of political tussles. Nitish Kumar to meet governor to stake claim while Jitan Ram Manji stands firm on a floor test. Government expected to reveal more names in the black money probe. Around 60 more names listed with funds close to 1,500 crore rupees in Swiss banks. President Pranam Mukherjee urges global help to effectively tackle menace of terror, urges heads of Indian missions to take up the challenge. Ukraine and Russian leaders are set to meet today to work out a way to end fighting US mulls arming Ukraine troops against Russia. And at least 22 people killed in Cairo after police clash with supporters during a football match. To focus on the bulletin this morning, all eyes will be on Bihar today as the political tussle within the JDU gets more intense over the weekend. Now, former Chief Minister Nitish Kumar is set to stake claim to replace Jitan Ram Manji as uh, the new Chief Minister. He is set to meet the Governor this afternoon and parade MLAs in his support. Nitish claims at least 130 MLAs are backing him. This comes amid Manji's announcement that he will stand his ground and go for a floor test to prove his majority. On on Sunday, Governor Keshrinath Tripathi accepted the resignations of 20 cabinet ministers on the advice of Manji. Speculations are rife that Manji may get BJP's backing after he met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Delhi on Sunday. The blame game continues between JDU and BJP over the political crisis in the state. BJP has denied charges by the JDU that it has orchestrated the rift within the party to gain in Bihar. Puri party. नीतीश कुमार जी के साथ है शरद यादव के नेतृत्व में है तो इनके पास तो कोई है नहीं तो इनको तो वही बीजेपी का ही सहारा है ना ये जो भी खेल है ना वो बीजेपी का खेल है और बीजेपी कोई यही एक खेल नहीं खेल रही है उसने बीजेपी ने आपको दिल्ली में यही खेल खेला बीजेपी को तो कोई मतलब नहीं स्क्रिप्ट लिखने से क्या मतलब है स्क्रिप्ट तो खुद लिखे हैं और खुद जो है सो उस पर एक्ट भी कर रहे हैं जदयू का स्क्रिप्टिंग भी है और एक्टिंग भी है और इसमें बीजेपी का कोई रोल नहीं है ये जदयू का अंदरूनी झगड़ा है जीतन राम मांझी भी बहुमत का दावा कर रहे हैं और नीतीश कुमार जी भी बहुमत का दावा कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये संवैधानिक दायरे में ही तय होगा महामहिम राजपाल जी को तय करना है जो कुछ भी तय होगा वो संविधान की रोशनी में होगा Meanwhile, earlier on Sunday, Jitan Ram Manji continued his defiance against uh, the JDU leadership. After meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Manji addressed a press conference saying that he still remains the Chief Minister. Here's more. Clearing the decks for forming a government under Nitish Kumar's chief ministership, a JDU delegation along with other party allies submitted letters of support to the Bihar governor's office. But the political drama seemed to be by no means over. Despite being defeated by the lack of numbers, Chief Minister Jitan Ram Manji put up a brave face on Sunday. Today I am very much Chief Minister and will, pro will prolong till the lesser party of the uh, Janata Dal United uh, decide otherwise. Pradhan Mantri Ji se humne rajnitik charcha kuch nahi ki hai. E jarur hum unse kaha ki Bihar mein abhi jo prasthitiyan hai usme aap humko madad kijiye. Aap madad kijiye ga to Bihar ka vikas hoga jiske liye aap committed hai. On Saturday, in a curious turn of events, Manji recommended the dissolution of the state legislature. But he was supported by only seven cabinet ministers with an overwhelming 21 ministers opposing him. His script is written in Delhi. Shri Amit Shah is the chief of his work. And he has been broken down in the country. He has been broken down in the country. He has been broken down in the country. He has been broken down. हमारे पास 130 का मैजिक नंबर है हम राजभवन से लेकर के राष्ट्रपति भवन तक अपनी मेजोरिटी साबित करने के लिए तैयार है The BJP claimed it had nothing to do with the crisis and in fact accused Nitish Kumar of leading the anti-Manji campaign in JDU 
हमने तो नीतीश कुमार जी को रिजाइन करने को नहीं बोला था बीजेपी ने तो नहीं कहा था कि मांझी जी को बना मांझी जी खास करके उनके खासम खास लोगों में थे और वो महादलित का राग भी अलाप रहे थे तो इस इंटेंशन से उन्होंने बनाया तो ये जवाब तो उन्हीं को देना पड़ेगा कि एक व्यक्ति को जिनको आप बनाए आप प्रोटेक्ट उनको नहीं कर रहे हैं और उनके खिलाफ आप ही माहौल बिगाड़ रहे हैं मांझी जी रहेंगे नीतीश कुमार को बनने का कोई सवाल पैदा नहीं होता है हम लोग बहुत सारे एम से कॉन्टेक्ट में है आरजेडी के एक दर्जन एम एल कांटेक्ट में है जेडीयू के भी जो जो हम लोग तो हैं विक्षुब्ध खेमा हम लोग तो 24-25 आदमी पहले से हैं नीतीश खेमे के भी कई लोगों से हम लोग संपर्क बनाए हुए हैं कांटेक्ट में हैं और निश्चित रूप से माझी जी रहेंगे या चुनाव या चुनाव होगा या जीता राम माझी मुख्यमंत्री रहेंगे In the end, Manji seemed to have precipitated the situation by keeping kept his party on tenter hooks. The last straw for the JDU was when he even praised Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The BJP was keen to exploit the crisis, but has been wary of propping up Manji, whose tenure has criticised even by its own state unit. Also, the Mahadalit leader just did not command the numbers within his own party, which gave Nitish Kumar the advantage. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. Well, hectic developments there taking place uh, in Bihar. In the meantime, of course, in Delhi, uh, the BJP leaders have huddled up. There was a meeting that was held yesterday between senior leaders of uh, uh, the Bihar BJP unit and uh, the party president Amit Shah, where they discussed what could possibly happen and what would the strategy be as far as uh, uh, Bihar is concerned. Let's not forget uh, the Chief Minister Jitan Ram Manji also met uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He was in Delhi for the Niti Aayog uh, uh, meeting of Chief Ministers, of course, and he happened to meet uh, Narendra Modi for a period of 40 minutes. But he came out and said politics was not discussed, but uh, uh, one should, of course, read more into it, uh, and probably politics was indeed discussed there. He sent out a message as well uh, to the people saying a uh, not very clear message, but a message indeed saying that uh, he could possibly get the BJP support on the floor of the house in Bihar. Joining me for a chat this morning is uh, senior journalist Nirja Chaudhary. We'll discuss uh, and analyze the Bihar situation in more detail. Now, good morning, Nirja, and thank you for joining me on the program. Yeah, well, uh, you know, hectic developments taking place yeah. as far as Bihar is concerned over the weekend. We've seen meetings taking place in uh, Bihar as well as in Delhi. What do you see happening today? Because it's extremely crucial because Nitish Kumar is going to meet the governor later on in the day. I think all eyes are now on the governor. Nitish Kumar is expected to stake his claim, to give a list of people who are supporting him. Uh, his party has made it clear that they have the support of the RJD and the Congress yes. and the CPI. And with the numbers they have of Janta Dal U MLAs, they add up to 130, which is a clear majority. Mr. Maji has squared the pitch. There's a lot of confusion. He says he will not resign even though Nitish Kumar has been elected as the new leader of the Janta Dan Liu Legislature Party. Now, he is obviously in a minority, Maji. He's met the Prime Minister. He's met uh, BJP leaders in Delhi. He's obviously sought their support even though he says he's not talked politics to them. The BJP is also watching the situation because well, the question before the BJP is with, would they like to support a ragtag group mm. at this mm. stage when six months down the line there are going to be elections anyway and it is an ascendant force in Bihar. So would it like to uh, you know have the flag come of whatever the acts of commission and omission of Mr. Maji in the next six months. Indeed. The, the, the plus side is that Mr. Maji belongs to the Musahar community amongst the lowest in the uh, Dalits and the Maha Dalits. So Maha Dalits are about 15 percent. The SCs in Bihar are 23 percent which is a very large chunk. Large chunk and yes. every group is eyeing that vote. That is why um, Mr. Nitish Kumar made Mr. Maji the CM the chief minister, and they, you know, they treated him with kid gloves till this time when they felt he wasn't playing ball and they were getting more flack than uh, you know benefit out of him continuing in the saddle in Patna. So now all eyes on the governor. Will he... You know, talking about the governor, what are the options really in front of the governor now? Are his hands tied really as far as the situation is concerned? Look, option number one is that he tells Mr. Maji, please, you are saying that you have a majority, prove it on the floor of mm. the house. Because parading in front of uh, the governor or anybody else has had no meaning. The Supreme Court in the past has said that tests must be conducted on the floor, floor of the, of the house. house. Yes. So, he can ask Mr. Maji, prove it. 
then the next option should be that if somebody is taking claim and saying I do have the numbers to give that person Mr. Nitish Kumar a chance to prove his majority. Now the, the catch in this situation is will Mr. Maji recommend the dissolution of the house and therefore early elections and can the governor accept that recommendation from somebody who has lost obviously seems to have lost his majority. Mm, mm. Now you can technically argue that uh, 15 ministers from the Maji cabinet have already uh, resigned. resigned the Their resignations have been accepted. accepted. Yes. So the cabinet now has very few members and with those few members if Mr. Maji recommends the dissolution of the house then that, that cabinet is not in a uh, minority. Mm. You know technically are you going to be uh, making that argument, I don't know. Yes. So, all eyes on the governor, does he go by the spirit of the constitution? Uh, and the way seems very clear, this man is now in a majority and another person has been elected, you know, to conduct the test, test on the floor of the house. Or will they be tempted, will the BJP be tempted to go in for early elections and not allow this new combination, this new grand alliance you know, talking about the BJP. To consolidate in Bihar. You know, talking about the BJP, the JDU leaders have accused the BJP of orchestrating this rift really within uh, the JDU. Has this really happened? Does the BJP want early elections in Bihar? What's happening on that front? I think BJP might like early elections in Bihar for the simple reason. Otherwise, Mr. Nitish Kumar and uh, Lalu Prasad Yadav and others get a chance to get a grip. Mm. and uh, you know go to the people once again. Nitish Kumar has of course been holding training sessions amongst his workers. Uh, so they would like the surprise element uh, to kick in and uh, but the other side would naturally want more time. You see they are also may be colored, I don't know mm. but they may be colored by the Delhi exper experience when instead of going for the polls in Delhi soon after the Lok Sabha elections maybe along with Haryana and Maharashtra, they waited so long and allowed Mr. Arvind Kejriwal uh, to get his act together in mm, Delhi. Mm. So there is an opinion inside the BJP which feels let's go for early elections, now is the moment, don't let this grand alliance uh, sure. uh, you know, um, consolidate its uh, base. All right, Nita Chaudhary, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us this morning uh, on the program and putting things into perspective for us. Well, moving on now, of course, the government is expected to disclose the names of close to 60 Indians and entities as it has recently initiated tax evasion prosecution proceedings against them as part of its crackdown on black money accounts as reported in the HSBC Bank's Geneva branch list. Sources said that those against whom legal action has been initiated include some corporates, business houses and other individuals as the Income Tax Department has completed its probe and filed prosecution complaints against these entities on the directions of the special investigation team constituted to tackle black money and illegal assets held by Indians abroad. The government is expected to disclose the names of close to 60 Indians and entities accused of stashing black money in Swiss banks. The centre has recently initiated tax evasion prosecution proceedings against them as part of its crackdown on black money accounts as reported in HSBC Bank's Geneva branch list. According to sources, those who face legal action include some corporates, business houses and other individuals. The Income Tax Department has completed its probe and filed prosecution complaints against these entities on the directions of the SIT constituted to tackle black money and illegal assets held by Indians abroad. They said that the total amount in these accounts is estimated to be close to 1,500 crore rupees. Last year, a list of 627 foreign account holders was submitted to the Supreme Court. Three names uh, were made public, including that of Pradeep Barman of the Dabur Group after legal proceedings had started against them. Moving on now, President Pradam Mukherjee urged strong action to end terrorism when he addressed the heads of Indian missions in Delhi on Sunday. Speaking at the conference, uh, the President called upon India's ambassadors and high commissioners to live up to the challenge to address the issue. He urged the international community to assert itself and take a concerted and de determined action against terrorism of which India is one of the oldest victims. This great menace and challenge to humanity, human values. If we are to face ably and squarely, I do feel 
international cooperation and international action is absolutely called for. Well, on that note, we'll slip into a short break now. But up next, swine flu claims two more lives in Delhi and Telangana. That and much more coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Will it create a new avenue for employment for lakhs of Indian youths? Or will it provide unlimited powers to employers to decide the fate of those seeking employment? Discover the nuances of the new apprentices law. Watch our special show, Law of the Land, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Prime Minister urged all Chief Ministers to work with the Centre to forget, to forge, I beg your pardon, a model of uh, cooperative federalism. In the first meeting of the Governing Council of Niti Aayog, Modi announced uh, the creation of three subgroups within the Aayog. Uh, he also asked states to step up uh, two task forces each. Here's more. Chairing the first meeting of the Governing Council of Niti Aayog on Sunday, the Prime Minister emphasized the importance of states in the overall development of the country. The thrust of the opening uh, comments of the Prime Minister were in the context of uh, the governance model where you can actually see cooperative federalism at play. He mentioned that the priorities are growth, investment, jobs, poverty alleviation, decentralization, efficiency and no delay in execution of projects. He highlighted that the economic activity really has to take place in the states. At the meeting, the Prime Minister also announced that Niti Aayog will have three subgroups of Chief Ministers on different issues. The first subgroup will study 66 centrally sponsored schemes and recommend whether they should continue or stop or be transferred to states. The second subgroup will study the promotion of skill development and creation of skill manpower in states. The third one will deal with the institutional mechanism and technological inputs to make such Bharat a part of life in perpetuity. Several chief ministers at the meeting sought higher flow of funds from the center to the state. हमने आग्रह किया है कि जो हमारे राज्य हैं, उनके लिए स्पेशल स्टेटस बना रहना चाहिए और जो फंडिंग पैटर्न है, वो भी अथावत बना रहना चाहिए और हमने उनसे ये भी आग्रह किया है कि इन राज्यों के अपने भौगोलिक महत्व को देखते हुए केंद्र सरकार को इनके सीमांत क्षेत्रों के विकास का दायित्व पूरी तरीके से उठाना चाहिए। The Prime Minister also asked states to set up two task forces each, one for poverty alleviation and the second to recommend push for agriculture in each state. Vishal Dhaiya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on now, re-polling is being held at two polling booths in Delhi today, a day ahead of the results of the assembly polls. Re-polling is being held at one booth each in Rotash Nagar and Delhi Cantonment. The polling began at 8 a.m. and will continue till 6 p.m. The poll panel said that uh, there were problems in the electronic voting machines at the two booths on February 7th. There will be paid holiday for the voters of the two booths. Let's bring you up to date uh, with some more national news and updates in our segment nationwide. Singapore President Tony Tan Keng Yam arrived in New Delhi on Sunday for a four-day visit. He is visiting the country to commemorate the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two nations. During the visit, Yam is scheduled to meet President Pranam Mukherjee, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj. Swine flu claimed its sixth victim this year in Delhi on Sunday. A 55-year-old man succumbed to the H1N1 virus at a hospital in the national capital yesterday. So far, a total of 907 cases have been recorded in Delhi. Meanwhile, a pregnant woman died while undergoing swine flu treatment in Telangana. As many as 41 people have died in the state this year so far. 
At least 13 people were killed in Golaghat district of Assam when a vehicle carrying 15 passengers rammed into a truck loaded with iron rods. At least 12 people died on the spot. Two survivors who suffer, suffered injuries were rushed to a nearby hospital. Well, let's take a look now at some newsmaking events lined up for the day today in our special segment, The Day Ahead. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold a review meet of the infrastructure sector today. The Prime Minister will review the work done on modernization and expansion of the railways. He has expressed his dissatisfaction over the working of various new projects of laying down new lines and develop redevelopment of some stations. He will also review the working of other ministries, roads, shipping and civil aviation. With the focus on strengthening the fight against Naxals, Home Minister Rajnath Singh will chair a meeting of Chief Ministers of four Maoist hit states, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Telangana and Odisha today. They will also discuss plans to give a push to the anti-Naxal operations in Bastar considered to be a Maoist hub. The meeting will also be attended by DGPs of all four states, heads of parliamentary uh, forces and uh, senior Home Ministry officials. The government will release the GDP data for the third quarter ended December 31st, 2014 today. Till recently, it had altered the measuring index which put the growth for 2013-14 at 6.9%, way above the 4.7% previously reported. The trend is likely to continue and positive figures are expected even today. Going on to some international news now, after a conference call yesterday, Ukraine and Russia are set to meet in Minsk for talks uh, next week to end fighting. Stressing that uh, the only solution to the crisis must be a diplomatic one, European Union hoped the talks would bring a breakthrough. Meanwhile, the US is considering arming Ukraine troops against Russian offensive. Here's more. Diplomatic efforts have picked up to find a solution to the ongoing Ukraine crisis. A four-way summit with leaders of Russia, Ukraine, Germany and France has been agreed to in Minsk on Wednesday. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President François Hollande are leading the way to bring the two warring sides to the negotiating table. We are united uh, when it comes to support to Ukraine, uh, which is something badly needed. We are united when it comes to economic pressure. Uh, and we are united also on the definition of the need to have a political dialogue, first of all. So I think and I expect that we stay united uh, even in the coming months. The details of the new proposal are being worked out with a militarized zone expected around the current front line. However, Russian President Putin said the meet would only take place if they reach a comprehensive settlement under the plan. Ukraine President Poroshenko expressed hope that talks would lead to a swift and unconditional ceasefire by both sides. But the West is still wary of Russia's policies and promises. The United States is considering sending defensive weapons to Ukraine, a move opposed by some European leaders. Hopefully, uh, he will come to a point where he realizes the damage he is doing is not just to the global order uh, and the, and the uh, process, but he is doing enormous damage to Russia itself. And I'm convinced, I think most people are convinced, that each month that goes by, uh, that will catch up to him ultimately in Russia itself. Meanwhile, massive shelling and fighting continues between the Ukrainian forces and pro-Russian rebels in eastern Ukraine. Separatists have intensified shelling of government forces on all front lines and appear to be amassing forces for new offensives. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. United Nations climate change negotiations opened in Geneva on Sunday ahead of a deal to curb global warming due, to, due in Paris in December. The week-long meeting is the first in a series that is meant to culminate in a globally binding agreement on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It aims to limit the rise in global temperatures to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. 
The specific aim of the Geneva meeting is to trim down a 37-page blueprint negotiated in Lima last year into a negotiating document. Concerns were raised after the World Meteorological Organization said that 2014 was the hottest year on record. Big challenge it is to maintain the same, to maintain the momentum, to maintain our enthusiasm, to maintain all of our activities to deal with the problem and to get an agreement by the end of this year. Now we need to work with an even higher sense of urgency. As we recall the sovereign conclusions of the last IPCC fifth report, and we learned that according to the World Meteorological Organization, 2014 has been the warmest year on recorded history. This week, we need to act with responsibility and vision. I ask you to work with efficiency and a sense of compromise. Right, here's uh, some more uh, international news and updates in our segment, Global Buzz. Egypt has set the date for the retrial of jailed Al Jazeera journalists Bahir Mohammed and Mohammed Fami. The two journalists will appear in court on February 12th after spending 407 days in prison. Bahir Mohammed and Mohammed Fami were jailed after being accused of colluding with the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood. Greece's Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has vowed to stick to plans to roll back austerity and rejecting an international bailout extension. He said Greece, unable to service its debt, would instead seek a bridge loan. EU officials have rejected his efforts to renegotiate Greece's bailout terms. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has survived a confidence vote on the leadership of his party after just 17 months in power. He won the test with 61 votes against 39. The leadership test came after a series of policy missteps by Abbott that saw his popularity tumble. Dozens of Jordanian fighter jets have launched bombing raids on Islamic State targets. The jets launched airstrikes at what are believed to have been training centers and weapons caches. Uh, the raids come days after the militants release footage showing the burning alive of a Jordanian fighter pilot. Yemeni political factions have agreed to resume talks aimed at resolving the country's political crisis. The talks are set to begin today and will include the Houthis who recently took over power in Yemen. The Shia rebel group has been widely condemned after dissolving parliament and setting up an interim government. And for all the sports news, here's a look at our sports beat. 22 people were killed outside a soccer stadium in Cairo on Sunday when security forces barred fans from entering. Most of the dead were suffocated when the crowd stampeded after police used tear gas to clear the fans trying to force their way into a league match between two Cairo clubs, Zamalek and NP. Ivory Coast defeated Ghana in a penalty shootout to win the African Nations Cup. Goalkeeper Babakar Bari scored the decisive penalty to end the 23-year title drought for Ivory Coast. Ghana was defeated 9-8 in a shootout after the final ended 0-0 following extra time. Pakistan opener Mohammad Hafiz has been ruled out of the World Cup with an ankle injury. Hafiz has been replaced by left-handed opener Nasir Jamshed. Pakistan had already lost fast bowlers Umar Gul and Junaid Khan to injury. Pakistan will play their first match against India in Adelaide on February 15th. Venus Williams defeated Maria Irigoyen of Argentina 6-1, 6-4 to help the US move to the Fed Cup playoffs in April and a chance to return to the World Group. The victory gave US an unassailable 3-1 lead in the best of five World Group 2 tie. The Americans have won the Federation Cup title 17 times more than any other nation with the last victory in 2000. Maria Sharapova defeated Poland's Agnieszka Radzwanska in the opening match to book Russia's spot in the Fed Cup semi-finals. Sharapova won 6-1, 7-5 to give Russia an unassailable 3-0 lead in the best of five time. That's it on the breakfast news. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.